Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this Sabbath morning to worship you who created the heavens and the earth, who sent your Son that we might live. Bless us this day. Open our minds to receive your word and your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Nation of Israel, because of um, transgression under Zedekiah, were taken captive into Babylon. Um, it is important to bear in mind that Babylon was, was not a nation of God. Um, remember that it, Babylon was a kingdom steeped in idolatry, yet God permitted his people to go into captivity under their yoke. But the time came when God brought his people out of Babylon into a land that the land that he had given to them prior to their captivity. Remembering that the time that Christ came, the Levitical system was steep in corruption. And the time had come for Christ to do away with that system, to set up the new. If you'll go with me to Hebrews chapter 10. And I'll just begin from the, very, from the first verse. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the, make the commerce thereon to perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Um, drop down to verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, Thou wouldest not, neither hadest pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Christ came to take away the sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings under the Levitical system, that he may establish the will of God in the hearts of men. The will of God established in the hearts of men, the disciples, which were separated from the, from the apostate, from apostate Israel, um, resulted in the pulling down of the strongholds of paganism. <clears throat> Remember in the book of Acts how much the disciples had done in the destruction of paganism. Satan realizing his efforts um, was now at where really his efforts were not, were not successful in all that he had done, now decided to change his method of operation. And so cloaked himself in Christian garments and walked into the church. The intention thereof was to bring the church again or take the church again back into Babylonian captivity. If you'll go with me to Revelation chapter 6. And verse 6.
Well, I would, sorry, I would prefer to start from verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. This time period coincide with the third church, the Pergamos church, as Satan um, was accomplishing his purpose of entering into the churches. Satan knew fully that he couldn't take the churches, God's church back into Babylon um, except under the condition that the churches were in transgression. So uh, through Constantine, he introduced the Sunday law. And as a result of this transgression in God's church, God, God, God reacted with the judgment upon pagan Rome. I wanted you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 8. As we consider events that are opening up under the seventh seal, yet they have their fulfillment under the third seal, which we've just read in verse, in chapter 6, verse 6. Verse 1 of, of, of chapter 8 states, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the, of the, of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angels took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunders and lightning and a great earthquake. This is God's judgment as he, the censer is being cast into the earth in direct response to the prayers of the saints. And verse 7 states, Sorry, verse 6 states, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Remember that Constantine, entered the church, Constantine set up the Sunday law in 321 AD, and the trumpets began the destruction not long after that Sunday law within the church. Um, those four, the first four trumpets led or brought us to the point in time when the transition was taking place between pagan Rome and papal Rome. Western Rome was now brought, was, was now, the judgment of God was now upon Western Rome and, and it was necessary, well really and truly if you think about it, Satan was really the, was really the mastermind behind the destruction of Western Rome as he was now um, counterfeiting the work of Christ. If you think about it, Christ, as we read in Hebrews chapter, chapter 10, that Christ came to take away the first, uh, the sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings, that he may establish the second. And really, when we understand the whole aspect of the daily, as, as, as Jeff was going through it throughout this week, if you will turn with me to hold on to Revelation 8, we will come back. If you go with me to Revelation chapter 12. <laughs> And I may have a tendency to do that. Sometimes I will start out something and I realize, no, I need to add some more information to it so that you can understand what I'm saying. So I would drop it for a minute and just go off to um, a, little, a little more light so that you can understand what I'm saying. And this is what I'm doing right now. In Daniel 12, 11. So bear with me sometimes if you, if you find that I'm doing this. Daniel 12, 12 says, And from the time that the daily shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. 
pointing to the fact that Daniel 12, 12. Sorry, what did I say? I'm sorry, Daniel 12, 12. So are you in Revelation? I'm sorry. Daniel 12, 12. 12, 11. Daniel 12, 11. Um, Satan was taken away the first, which is paganism, which also was, st was um, a system set up with sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings that he may establish the second, the abomination, which is the will of Satan. As Christ did the same, Satan was now doing the same. But Satan could not have um, begun that process until the transgression until pagan Rome had transgressed and God permitted the action, this action to take place. And God permitted the judgments of the trumpets. He permitted the northern tribes, or he allowed Satan to move those powers against pagan Rome. And pagan Rome, but, but really Satan was working out his agenda. He was now phasing out a system that was useless against Christianity against the power that Christ had, had, had given to his church. And he, had not, he was now assuming a Christian guise, entering the churches with the intention to lead the church into transgression so that the church can be, so that he can repeat the history of ancient Israel to take the church back into Babylon. And of course, he accomplished that purpose with the man of sin. As the, as, the, as the church, as paganism walked into the church, cloaked in Christian garments, remember her ceremonies, her, her, her systems of worship began to take precedence in the, in the Christian church, and the church became an apostate church, the Roman church. At that time in Revelation chapter 11, if you go with me to Revelation chapter 11, God as he preserved his people through the, through the prophets in Babylon. Uh, God preserved his people during that time period when they were taken into Babylon spiritually. In Revelation 11, um, verse 3, he says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed, in sackcloth. Now, God's people were, God had preserved a people during that time period in Babylon. Um, however, during that time period of five, 538 to 1798, remember on, this, was, this was Western Rome, Eastern Rome was also suffering or, or rather receiving the judgments of God. And that is the under the fifth and the sixth trumpet. The fifth and the sixth trumpet was um, being poured out upon or being sounded against Eastern Rome. Now, remembering, remembering, if you turn with me to Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fell from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. <coughs> Excuse me. Give me water there. Thanks. Yeah, that's fine. Um, remember, remember that smoke. Thanks, Jeff. That smoke. That smoke comes from the bottomless pit. It's a power that is rising to remove, to remove um, the same kingdom, the fourth kingdom that had transgressed or that had that had brought in paganism into God's church. This is the reason for, if you will go back with me to Revelation chapter 8. Remember in, in, in verse 7, 
The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they, and, sorry. And they were, were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass were burned up. Remember that the reason for the trumpets upon Rome was because of the transgression, because she had, she had planted pagan customs within God's church. And as a result of that, the judgments were upon this power. So the first four trumpets had finished off Western Rome. Now the second, the second, the second, the, the following trumpets, the fifth and the sixth trumpets, were dealing with Eastern Rome. So this power from the bottomless pit is a power that is moved by Satan. Satan is allowed to do so, and, he's, and he has a particular agenda in mind. Remember that as he's, counterfeiting, as he's counterfeiting the work of Christ, as Christ took away the first that he may establish the second, which is the will of God, he took, Satan took away the first, paganism, that he may establish the second, antichrist, or the will of Satan. At the end of the 1260 years reign of supremacy of the papacy, the deadly wound is brought to view in Revelation 13 by this power that comes from the bottomless pit also, which is atheistic France or the spirit of atheism as it rose up in France. Again, this power is moved by Satan, not by God, it is moved by Satan. Though it resulted, it result, the result was that God's people were no longer persecuted by the papacy. However, a new, a new form, a new manifestation of Satan, satanic power was, was on the horizon. And this is, this is what is represented by Revelation 13, verse 11. If you go with me to Revelation 13, verse 11, and I know you're familiar with this text by now. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This beast power, remember, was now carrying the doctrines of Rome within it. And at the same time, I wanted you to focus back on the events of Eastern Rome. As this, the two trumpets were in their fulfillment, remember there was a time prophecy on these two trumpets, and, those, and the time prophecy comes to an end in 1840. So if you focus and remember, what I'm, all I'm saying here is ground that I have covered before, but there is a point I want to make, that's why I'm um, refreshing your memory with this point, uh, with, with those points of truth. If you will um, go with me to Revelation chapter 9 again. In verse 11 of the chapter says, concerning the power that was under the time prophecy that would end in 1840, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the, in the Greek tongue had his name Apollyon. Now, notice that this power over whom Apollyon presides, comes to a conclusion in 1840. In 1840, remembering at that point in time, if you will go with me to Revelation 7. Revelation 7, we read, After these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the, on, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Notice that this angel is ascending from the east. And notice that the angel of Baden is also coming from the east. 
two angels, an angel, one angel from the bottomless pit, another from heaven. At this point in time, it is wise to remember, and I know that when we consider the, the, the work of Islam as it, as, it, as it became a scourge against an apostate church, one have a tendency to think that um, this power can be a godly power, a power that somehow or the other Christ is working within, but it is not so. Christ was not working within, within um, the Babylonian power, nor had he anything to do with the ceremonies and worship of, of Babylon. Yes, he worked with Nebuchadnezzar. Yes, he, he was a witness to Nebuchadnezzar in many ways, and Nebuchadnezzar became converted. But the system of Babylon, which, have, which has been handed down throughout the ages, is a corrupt system. And it has nothing to do with God. In like manner, this power that, that rose up from the bottomless pit, spreading the darkness across the globe, which really and truly was working out the agenda of Satan as he was phasing out one, part, one, one, part, one um, category of his, one section of his work to introduce another. That portion, that paganism in his raw form um, was being phased out and a, new, and a new guy, it was assuming a new guys, the Christian guys. If you realize, if you, if you will drop down in mind to 1798 and the deadly wound of the papacy, as this new beast is rising from the earth, paganism again is a, a, adopting a new guys. And Ellen White, as she deals with this subject, she says, the first persecuting power referring to paganism in its in its forms of Babylon, Persia, Greece, pagan Rome, she says the first persecuting power, under the first persecuting power, open alliance was seen with, with Satan, with the dragon. But she says, under the second persecuting power, all traces, sorry, the, the, the dragon is masked, but the spirit that actuates it can clearly be seen, that, it's, that, that it is of the same family. And she says, the third persecuting power, all traces of the dragon is absent, and a lamb-like beast appears, but when it speaks, its dragon voice will betray it that is of the same family as the two preceding powers. This is a new guise that, that paganism was being transformed into from Catholicism to apostate Protestantism. The two powers I have you standing still in, 18, in 1840 where um, the, the Islamic the Islamic powers had just come to an end in 1840, and the spirit of, or the angel of the, the Radon, the spirit from, from the bottomless pit, was standing still in 1840, in 1840, together with the angel from the east, with the seal of the living God. As you see, this beast rising from the earth. And it is obvious that the whole, the whole point of those two angels standing, standing still at that point in time while this beast is ascending, it's a sealing process. A sealing process from above and a sealing process from beneath. And it is from that point of view that we have to um, look at the spirit that came from the bottomless pit which, the, the, which um, ro arose in the Arabian desert. It's a, it's a false light and has nothing to do with the kingdom of heaven. However, remember when, that when Christ was departing from the earth, he said it was necessary for him to go away. Um, the reason for his going away is that it was necessary now for the Holy Spirit to be sent in that Christ could no longer be everywhere at the same time. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit was to come and he was to guide the church into all truth, and he was to lead the church to worship, to worship Christ, was the bottom line in, in uh, Matthew, sorry, in John chapter 15, verse 15. In like manner, Satan was adopting this very, this very principle. The reason for facing Catholicism out was that apostate Protestantism was now to carry out the work of Antichrist. Um, even as the Holy Spirit came to carry out the work of Christ. Now, 
There are many things that we have to get straight in that time period of 1840 to 1844, especially in 1840. And if we, if we remember, if we, if we understand anything concerning the experience of the Millerites, um, we must see that in 1840, 1840 was a crucial point, a point that Jesus refers to as the budding trees uh, or, or the time when the, the trees shoot forth. It's necessary to understand that if we, if we arrive at a wrong conclusion on this platform, when, when, when that history gets repeated, which is being repeated right now in our experience, we will also arrive at the wrong conclusion here because our conclusions in our time is based on the events that transpired in the time period of 1840, 1844. Concerning Satan and the way he operates, and I'm just going to read a statement from Page Action Prophet. It may seem to be out of context, but it's not. As we get down to it, you will see why I'm reading it. In Page Action Prophet's page 37, paragraph 1, she says, There had been no change in the position or authority of Christ. Lucifer's envy and misrepresentation and his claims to equality with Christ had made necessary a statement of of the true position of the Son of God. But this had been the same from the beginning. Many of the angels were, however, blinded by Lucifer's deception. Taking advantage of the loving, loyal trust reposed in him by the holy angels under, the, under his command, he had so artfully instilled into their minds his own distrust and discontent that his agency was not discerned. Lucifer had placed in their minds um, that it was unfair the way heaven had treated his agency. And so the angels were now thinking these things, thinking that it was their own thoughts, but really he had, he had accomplished that purpose in their heart. Lucifer had presented the purposes of God in a false light misconstruing and distorting them to excite dissent and dissatisfaction. He cunningly, drew, he cunningly drew his hearers on to give utterance to their feelings. Then these expressions were repeated by him when it would serve his purpose. As evidence, as evidence that the angels were not fully in harmony with the government of God, while claiming for himself perfect loyalty to God, he urged that changes in the order and laws of heaven were necessary for the stability of the divine government. Thus, while working to excite opposition to the law of God and to instill his own discontent into the minds of the angels under him, he was ostensibly seeking to remove dissatisfaction and to reconcile disaffected angels to the order of heaven. And when one examined, she says, he was ostensibly seeking to remove dissatisfaction and to reconcile disaffected angels to the order of heaven. And, and in the, the diction meaning of the word ostensibly means to declare, profess, while concealing the actual or genuine pretended, apparent, but not necessarily real. So he pretended to be doing one thing while he was doing another. He pretended to be working for the harmony of heaven while he was seeking really to destroy the harmony in heaven. While secretly fomenting discord and rebellion, he with consummate craft, and that means perfect craft, perfect deception, cause it to appear as his whole purpose to promote loyalty and to preserve harmony and peace. If we consider the moves that are being made at this time, um, leading up to, well not at this time, but the moves that were made leading up to 1840, 
They were consummate craft. They were perfect craft, perfect deception. As on the artwork it looked, for example, on the artwork it looked like Islam was a power that was um, fighting to, God was using this power to preserve his people. Really and truly this power was working in harmony in removing, um, and removing paganism and preparing the way for this new power that was rising from the earth. And while atheism seemed to be removing Catholicism as it persecuted God's people, really and truly it was paving the way for this new power um, that would be rising from the earth. Really and truly it was about the agenda of Satan um, in a form that would deceive except the, very, except the elect. Um, it would deceive the whole world, in fact. In fact, Revelation 13, if you'll go with me to Revelation 13. As these events Revelation 13, verse 11, dealing with the rise of the beast again. We just read it earlier on. I'll read it again. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused of the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he drew of great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Now, Taking this point into consideration here, this point alludes to Mount Carmel, where Elijah, the, the prophet of God, brought down fire from heaven upon the altar of Jehovah um, to prove who was the true God. Remembering that 1840, where I left you standing, where this power which has the angel abandoned presiding over it is standing still while the angel from the, from the east with the seal of God is standing um, waiting for this beast that is rising from the earth, which is carrying the papacy, which is carrying the papal doctrine in the minds of men. And two classes are, uh, two classes are within, this, within this beast, United States of America, which is the five wise, five foolish virgins, and the two classes in the end of the, of, in, the in, in the end time, sorry, in, in the conclusion of the judgment, 1840, 1844, um, the two classes were sealed with their respective seals. Now, in this whole scene, as it repeats itself again, Revelation 13 points to the fire coming down from heaven, um, which, which this beast power is able to bring, and. Verse 14 says, And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. Uh, I, want you, I, want to pay, I want to focus on verse 13 a little bit um, in terms of the fire that comes down from heaven in the sight of men. Um, this fire is of, a de is of a deceptive nature in that this power is able to pass itself off as the power of God, as a power from above. Um, and the majority of the inhabitants of the earth will be deceived by this wonder-working power. This event is well on the way at this point in time within our Christian experience. And how we understand the events of 1840 will depend on whether this delusive power, this power that, is, that, is, that deceives the whole world. Um, in fact, let me put it this way. The, the, the fate of the five wise, five foolish virgins 
was determined by this very, by this very fire that came down. Um, it is not what we see as Spirit of Prophecy brings it out. She says, the Advent movement of 1840 to 1844 was a manifestation of the power of God. So when you, we see the fire from above that sealed the wise virgins, what we don't see is Revelation 13 in relationship to the, to the false fire that sealed the foolish virgins. And it's connected with the, 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 the events of Revelation 9. Revelation 9, as it's, been as it's been refulfilled again in the experience of the five wise, five foolish virgins, as we see the event of the fifth and the sixth trumpet repeating itself after the Battle of Nineveh in, in, 19, in 1989, then, we, we be, then this opens the door to us understanding Revelation 13, 13, um, ooh, the way we should understand it in this time that we live in. I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 16 and hold on to Revelation 13. Revelation 16, as it uh, brings to you events that are taking place in relationship to Revelation 13, 13. Verse 12 says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the waters thereof were dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now, those the free unclean spirits are gathering. Notice that verse 13, as it introduces the, the free unclean spirits, you know, the revelator placed that in the time of the plagues. But really, the, that work of the free unclean spirits takes place before the plagues. And remember that we, we, we um, examined um, the fifth and the sixth trumpet, and we saw that the fifth and the sixth trumpet were accomplishing the very same work of the fifth and the sixth plague. So, um, and if we understand when the sixth trumpet concluded, which is the point where I left you, I left you hanging in 1840, what was happening there, you, you should be able to identify the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. All three entities are present there. And this call for a decision time, a time where the people on the earth had to make a decision. The five wise and the five foolish virgins had to make a decision at that point in time. Again, we, we have come to that very same point in time again where Islam and the angel from the east are standing, standing, standing still, waiting for this beast that is rising from the earth. Rising from the earth, again, in terms of 1989, the papacy had gotten upon the back of the United States of America, and the process of bringing the world into subjection to the papacy has began. Um, at this point in time, we are standing in the place where these free unclean spirits are now gathering the world. And there was a time, there's a decision to be made um, by the two classes of people. There's confusion at this point in time concerning the, um, for example, whether the Twin Towers, the events of the Twin Towers, which fulfills, which fulfills the part or the part of the history of the, of the sixth trumpet where, where Islam began, begins her torment and slaying of the armies of Rome. As the, as the Twin Towers, as the events of, of that took place there in, in, in um, um, September 11, many are wondering whether, um, well, there's, as, I, as we watched the video yesterday concerning the conspiracy, the, the conspiracy theory, that it was a plan, it, it was planned out by the governments of the United States or other forces other than Islam. The point is that prophecy says 
following the Battle of Nineveh, Islam was to begin, her, to begin attacking the armies of Rome. At this point in time, um, we to see clearly that we to see clearly the repeat of history taking place, and we to see clearly that this power from the bottomless pit is now paving the way, paving the way for darkness to enter into the United States of America. The American people are developing a spirit similar to that of the Islamic people, in that there is retaliation in the heart of the American people. There's a principle at work um, as we consider this. But before I do that, I want to move away from Revelation 16. So I will finish up with Revelation 16 in verse 16. Um, the free unclean spirits gather the people, he says, and he gathered them together, verse 16, Revelation 16, into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. This is the this is the place, this is the place that parallels the events of 1840. There, the free and clean spirits have brought the world to that place where the decision has to be made whether, um, whether it's for Christ or for Antichrist. In that, in that decision-making decision process, the demons uh, uh, will use radical Islam to bring about unchrist-like characters in the, within the Christian world. In, if you will turn with me to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. The Apostle Paul, um, he, he brings out a principle that I want to uh, employ in relationship to what we've been talking about in connection with Re Revelation 13, verse 13 and 14. He says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. We know the glass here represents Christ. Christ is that glass. Christ is that mirror in which we behold the glory of the Lord. But I want you to, to Remember that Antichrist is, is counterfeiting the work of Christ, and the sa very same principle applies. So as we, as we look upon Antichrist, if we look upon Antichrist, what we will behold is the glory of the dragon, the glory of Satan. And as a result, one will be changed into the same image, even so, by the spirit of Satan. This is the principle that is at work by beholding you become changed. In Revelation 13, if you go back with me to Revelation 13 and dealing with the Carmel situation that is taking place, um, if you follow how the Revelator described this, verse 13 he says, and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Now, Revelation 9 has a, Revelation 9 has a big part to play with the budding, the budding process that is taking place, the change that will take place within the minds of the wise and the foolish virgins in this time of decision. He says, and, and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Now, the word sight, the word sight here can be taken as, as the literal sight or the spiritual sight. But as you notice in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the sight here brought to view that we, the mirror, we see Christ through faith. We see Christ in that mirror through faith. We see the glory of God through faith. And as a result of seeing the glory of God through the mind's eye or the eye of faith, we are changed into that very same image. So as, as, this, as this fire is coming down from heaven, 
this fire, those miracles that are taking place, those miracles of deception that is taking place. And there's a lot of deception connected with the, the, this, this events concerning Islam, concerning the, you know, the, the, the um, fifth and the sixth trumpet as it's, repeated, as it's repeating itself and it's bringing us to the point of the budding trees where the trees are either becoming Christ, fully Christ, or fully Satan. Whether they will have the, the angel of Abaddon presiding over them and that angel, that angel is a destructive angel or the angel of the east, whether they will bear the seal of the angel of the east. And so as they behold, as, they be, as, as, those, as this fire is coming down from heaven at this point in time, um, which, which the miracles which are being performed by the powers from beneath in order to secure the inhabitants of the earth, the revelator says, and he, verse 14, and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them, now, remember, if you take the word, if you change the word sight to faith, the faith of the beast, or as, as, as a counterfeit to the faith of Jesus, because he's performing the miracles through the faith of the beast, um, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. The result would be an image to the beast. The, the foolish virgins will, will form an image to the beast when those miracles have completed the work. The whole process, every, there's a, the, the, we have to understand that it has intensified, but the very same principles are at play in this time of decision that is repeating the history of the events of 1840 to 1844. 1840 was a time of decision where the free unclean spirits had gathered the world to that place of decision where they had to choose between Christ or Antichrist. We have come to that place and this is the final battle, the battle of Armageddon and the process has begun. Remember that the, the remember at Carmel the false prophets were slain, and the false prophets will be slain during the plagues. The process, but the process at this point in time, the decision-making process has begun, and it's now. We should, not, we should not allow ourselves to be confused as to what the power of Islam represents. What this move of 9-11 of, of, of represents, the activities concerning Islam at this point in time in relationship to this, um, in relationship to, to the, 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 the sealing process that is to take place. I really should have um, go to the chart, but I, I, didn't, I didn't do it um, because I felt that we had spoken about it quite extensively and I, was, I decided to... Um, well, the best that I could to bring, to bring all that I was saying for the past few days into one summary. Um, I hope I didn't lose anyone with, with all of it, but I believe that if you were to go back and examine some of the things I had said, what I've just said this morning shouldn't be so difficult to follow. Really and truly, that the point I'm trying to make in all of this is that the crucial point in the Foolish Virgin's experience was 1840. That crucial point had a lot to do with the, with the conclusion of Revelation 9. And as, as Revelation 9 is being fulfilled again under the third world, and it has brought us back to that place of 1840, the free unclean spirits are operating through um, means of deception. For example, one, one thing that Satan would, would love to do at this point in time is to destroy the pattern, the pattern that shows after Nineveh, um, Islam's, Islam should begin her attack upon the United States of America. So one should ask the question about, for example, the conspiracy video that we saw yesterday, who were the architects behind it in preparing this video, for example. We know the media networks are controlled by Rome, and nothing gets onto the media without the approval of Rome. So how is it, 
who are those men who are putting together those videos? This is a question that we should ask. And why is it coming at a point in time when the understanding of Revelation 9 pinpoints that this event, Islam, must be the, must be the power behind it? So it's either we have to go with the conspiracy video and say that it's correct and that Islam had nothing to do with it and forget about the prophecy or go with the prophecy. Amen. But remember that is by the means of those miracles, we in that, we in that time, we, in that, we, in that, we are at that point in time where we, we need to understand these facts and get them straight in our head because Satan, Satan doesn't need much for him to notice that Jeff brings out that at every, every, one of the, every one of the people, everyone who have gotten the idea, not the idea, but everyone who have gotten the daily incorrect, has an incorrect view of the daily, has found himself apostatizing, leaving, leaving the Adventist church. And the daily is not a salvation issue. Yet still, um, the way Satan has set it up, it's attached to the third angel's message. It's attached to a salvation issue. And then you throw the, babe, you throw the bath water out and forget to, get, forget to take the baby out, you throw the baby with it. It's, um, it's an interesting process, how the, how the powers of darkness are accomplishing their purpose on this planet. And I can only say is that we need to, we need to be intelligent. We need to have an intelligent understanding concerning the events of 1840, 1844. We need to study these things out, make sure that, we, that we're clear on these points as those arguments that will be presented at the end of the world will be, as Ellen White says, of a high intellectual nature, but then it will be wrong. We need to um, make Daniel and the Revelation our study. As Ellen White says, concerning the third angel's message, she says these things are to engross our whole mind and our whole attention as we come into the close of this earth's history. And the, the, we are at the crucial point in our Christian experience there, the free and clean spirits have gathered the world there already, have gathered the world, and the decision-making process has begun for life or for death. Brilliant. I'd like to close at this point. Pray. Okay. Shall we pray? Dear Father God, we thank you for the Sabbath. We thank you for your presence in it. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us, Lord, even to be here at this time to receive your blessing. We pray that you will bless us throughout this day. We'll keep our thoughts in heaven, that, Lord, we may not sin against you. And thank you again, Lord, for your work in the heavenly sanctuary concerning your people at this time. Help us, I pray, Lord, to... Make use of this time while you are in the heavenly sanctuary, Lord, that our lives may be brought fully in accordance with your will, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.